Hello, I'm Yuval Atzmon from NVIDIA Research, presenting our work on a causal view of compositional recognition in collaboration with Felix Krug, Uri Shalit, and Gal Chechik. Compositional reasoning is a hallmark of intelligence. It resembles human learning as it allows forming complex concepts and arguments from simple terms and recombines simple skills to solve new tasks. This work is about recognizing new compositions of familiar components, images like a monkey riding a boar, a purple cauliflower, or a black tomato. In all these cases, familiar components are combined in new ways. Recognizing new combinations is an easy task for people, but it is frustratingly hard for machine learning models. This basically happens because compositionality breaks the basic assumption in machine learning that test data comes from the same distribution of the training data. For example, if training did not include any black tomato, but did include black eggplants, models tend to learn that black is predictive for an eggplant and make an incorrect prediction predicting the tomato as an eggplant. More formally, in this work, we specifically focus on recognizing new combination of attributes and objects so, for example, at training time, we see examples of white cauliflowers and red tomatoes, but at test time, we may see a purple cauliflower that we have never seen before. And of course, we still want to recognize familiar combinations. Most deep models are discriminative. They struggle to learn new compositions as they struggle with other out of distribution samples because they model the probability of labels given an image and become sensitive to correlations between properties of an object and its label, even if they are not essential. Therefore, in this work, we model this problem from a causal perspective to avoid relying on these non-stable spurious correlations. Okay, so what is the causal mechanism that generates images in the world? You can take a that this image is actually a recording of something that happened in real life. There are some physical whiteness and cauliflowerness in the world that cause this image. So we can also look at the distribution of the image X conditioned on these factors. And this direction of the arrows capture the underlying physical mechanism, which is much more stable from training to test time because it captures some real dependency in the world rather than depending on the statistics of the data set. And the causal graph that generates images looks exactly like that. There is a variable for the attribute, which is just the identity of the attribute, a categorical variable, let's say white, which maps to some stable representation of how white looks like. Similarly, there is an object variable, let's say cauliflower, and it maps to some stable representation of how a cauliflower looks like. These mapping are stable from training to test time, and together they jointly generate an image of a white cauliflower. But the causal graph has another factor, which is this dashed edge. It expresses the confounding causal mechanism that generates the correlation between the attributes and the objects that exist in the training data but changes at test time. For example, where all cauliflowers are white and tomatoes are red. In that case, if attributes are correlated, how can we create an image of a new composition, like an image of a purple cauliflower? This leads us to the concept of intervention, where something interferes with the causal graph that generates the training data. It overrides the edge that entangles the attributes and objects and enforces the physical mechanism to generate an image of a new composition. The distribution of such samples is called the interventional distribution, which we see on the right. In this example, the intervention enforces the attribute to be purple and the object to be cauliflower, and jointly they generate an image of a purple cauliflower. Now, because we treat images from new combinations as interventions, we postulate that the question we should ask at inference time is which intervention on attributes and objects cause the observed image. So we can compute the probability of an image given this enforced intervention, and under some simplifying assumptions, 
This interventional distribution becomes equivalent to the simple conditional distribution. So how do we do inference in this model? To compute this conditional distribution exactly, we need to marginalize over the latent visual representations, these phi of A and phi of O, and to solve this nasty looking integral. And for that, we took a simple approximation. We take a point estimate inside this integral and model the attributes as having a deterministic mapping to the mean in this space, which some Gaussian stochasticity around it. And we look at the likelihood given that specific mean. Now, because this is a latent variable, we don't see it and we estimate it back from the image. So under the assumption of Gaussian-ness, the log likelihood becomes very nicely behaving and results with three embedding-like terms. How good is the representation of the attribute? How good is the representation of the object and of the image? And finally, we select the attribute and object that maximize this likelihood. Our loss has three components. One is how well the model matches the data. <clears throat> Second is how well it preserves the conditional independence relations that the causal graph dictates. And third is just technical, making sure to avoid null solutions. The first term, the data loss, is the negative log likelihood that was shown in the previous slide. The second term encourages the learned latent representation of the attribute and object to obey the conditional independence relations that are dictated by the structured causal model. We have four such independence relations. And for that, we use the Hilbert-Schmidt independence criterion, which is a differentiable measure of dependence between vectors and minimize it as a conditional independence loss term. We also show that this loss term encourages learning a representation of object that is robust to attributes interventions and vice versa. We experimented with two data sets, one synthetic and well controlled and the other is more natural. The first one is a new data set that we generated based on clever type of data, but it is simpler. There is only a single attribute, sorry, a single object in every image, and we had three types of objects and eight types of colors. We example, sorry, we examined the results in a diagram that shows the trade-off between the accuracy for image of seen pairs on the x-axis with the accuracy for the new unseen pairs on the y-axis. We see that different approaches may select different operating points to trade off the unseen accuracy for the seen accuracy. Some models tend to favor accuracy of unseen pairs over accuracy of seen pairs, while other models tend to favor the seen pairs. Importantly, this comparison reveals that encouraging uh, the conditional independence relations largely improve the unseen accuracy without hurting much the seen accuracy. Specifically, we observe large improvements when comparing a baseline without conditional independence to our full causal approach. We also observe that when comparing VisProd, which is a simple discriminative model, to a similar variant that is regularized by the same conditional independence relations. The second data set is the Zeppos data set of fine grained types of shoes with 12 object types and 16 attributes like canvas or leather. And again, we see that overall the causal approach improves the recognition accuracy for new combinations. So to sum it up, compositional generalization is out because of the confounding relations between the factors. A causal model formalizes this confounding relation and suggests that we should ask, which intervention caused the observed image. We presented a model that is stable across environments and achieved better recognition of unseen compositions. Now, this work focused on the case where attributes and nouns are independent, but often they do exhibit useful dependencies. We expect that the causal approach can be used as a useful prior for those cases. And finally, we handle here the specific case of attributes and nouns but compositionality is encountered widely. We expect that similar approaches can be applied to more rich combinations of actions, attributes, and nouns in images and videos. Thank you for listening and come visit our poster.